welcome to this uh, quadrant room, seat of a uh, road table. And uh, the idea is to begin to discuss. And we began with the principle. So why modeling? And I will try to be very straight, very, very fast. Why modeling? Because I want to explain. And it's incredible that we have to still to remember that in archaeology because there is absolutely no explanation in archaeology. Most archaeologists, they excavate, they find things, sometimes they describe, and that's the end of the job. And we forgot that archaeology is something about explaining the past, explaining the present, explaining everything. So, what do I want to explain? Which is the nature of the archaeological problem? And I think that there are two different kinds of archaeological problems, and both are related. The first one is, uh, I want to explain the actual occurrence of archaeological observables at the archaeological site. In a way, this is a taphonomic question. Why the site is like it is? Why these material things appear where they appear? Why I don't have the Pompeii hypothesis, why not everything has been preserved? And the second question that is related, of course, to the first one is what people did at that place and why they did there and then. Of course, the only way to solve the second question is if I explain, if I solve the first question. Why explain it? We show, if I remember that in archaeology, because explanation is not the most useful thing that we are doing. If you are not in, interested in explanation, then you don't need any modeling, you don't need any simulation. There is a lot of virtual reality, there is a lot of use of the word simulation. There is a lot of models in archaeology, but if you don't have any idea of explaining anything, these models, the simulation, are absolutely no sense at all. Why explaining? Because I have a problem. If I don't have a problem, and this problem is well formalized, so I don't need any model at all. I don't need anything. And when I have a problem, because I don't have enough knowledge to attain some goal. So this is another very important aspect in archaeology. So we have problems we, because we don't know enough. Sometimes archaeologists, they know absolutely everything about the artifacts, of course, not about the social activity they pretend to explain or to analyze. So we arrive to the idea of problem solving. That's here where we can learn from artificial intelligence theory and techniques. Uh, there is a big difference between common sense and scientific reasoning. And this is the idea of scientific problem. To solve a problem, you need to know the solution before to solve the problem. Hmm. It's a tricky way. Well, but this is the best definition of scientific method. You should make at least the most exhaustive possible of solutions. That means hypothesis with all the criteria to know if this is the right hypothesis, and then you select. This solution is better, that means more probable than this other one. And this is the main characteristic of scientific method. And this is what we need in archaeology. We need to create the problem space. That means the list of all the solutions that can be applicable to different scenarios. Archaeological problems are always adverse problems. What does it mean? That I know the effect. I know some material things that are related with things. What do you want to do? I want to discover the cause, the social question. And this is a causal statement. There is a causal mechanism between what I can see and what I want to infer. This causal mechanism, in fact, because we are dealing with social things, is a social mechanism. And because social mechanisms are dynamic, social activities change in structure and behavior, and they are subjected to change themselves, then I need a procedural language. 
if uh, this social mechanism is something static, I don't need model event simulation. Because my mechanism is extraordinarily dynamic, then I need a procedural language. And that's the reason. Simulating is just explaining by reproducing the causal mechanics of some phenomena. And the model is just an explanation. That means a set of operations that mean how the characteristic of people, characteristic of social activities, the characteristics of social interaction types and networks, generate change and modifications in themselves, among themselves. This is the idea. Why modeling? And what is, in fact, simulation? Why we need simulation? But this is only possible if you want to explain and you have formally well definite problems. And with that, we can open. Perfect. Time of time. All right. Comments, questions? Don't be shy. I know the first person is always difficult. Anyone? Anyone? Okay, well, I will. No, there is a question. Yeah. Carmela. <laughs> <Grimella. laughs> yes. I'm sorry, but I'm always disagreeing with your. Uh, always. Uh, That's very good. That's creative. <laughs> <laughs> Bring the blood. <laughs> mm, so, uh, you say you have to know a solution before uh, this other methods. Uh, and there is a huge range of. Uh, uh, methods which are called explorative uh, methods uh, in data analysis, and uh, you shouldn't cut <laughs> them out. Uh, they, they are there as well. There's not only simulation, it's not the only answer. Uh, simulation is a good answer uh, to many questions, but uh, the explorative uh, data analysis uh, can be uh, a good first step as well to get you some ideas. Yeah. Well, my, my answer is that we need solutions and depends on the problem. Because I have insisted on the idea of social mechanism. If you are looking for social explanation, social explanation is dynamic, and social mechanism begin with individual, and this is a kind of very complex summation of things, plenty of different things. All, every way, every, in all locations that your explanation implies many people acting in different, with different objectives and goals, then you have emergency phenomena. In those cases, you need a very, very special kind of explanation. This is what they call social mechanism. Of course, we have seen that we have different kinds of archaeological problems. Many taphonomic problems can be solved in terms of natural mechanisms, and sometimes this is just a linear causal relationship. Some kinds, we don't need an atomic bomb to kill a mosquito. <laughs> so we have to define very, very well the problem. And of course, there is a chain, a hierarchy in archaeological problems. Plenty of archaeological problems. Uh, how to identify a shape and function, for instance, form and function relationships. Plenty of different things. They need just standard classificatory approach, uh, linear statistics, why we need a kind of so complex way of solving if they can be solved with just a G-square test. Simulation is not necessary for everything, but there is always a moment in the archaeological research when you forget that you are archaeologist and you remember that you are an historian and you want to reconstruct what people did and not only why things are the way they appear to be, then you need something very general that we call social mechanism. There are plenty of different social mechanisms because it's impossible to find just one solution for everything. Some of them, they will need a net low approach. Some of them, they will need a differential equation approach. Depends on the nature of the mechanism because after all, simulation is just a language. And we should look, not the best language, but the language that is most explanatory for the problem we want to solve. So I don't know if, uh, if people will disagree for me, with me, but kind of coming from this angle, I feel like that there's a, there's a hierarchy of what methods should you use. 
and your first go-to should be data ana analysis because it's an analytical method, which means that is closer to mathematics, and that means it should always be used before simulation, if possible. Mm -hmm. And then, in this kind of hierarchy, then you should look if you can solve the problem using um, mathematical simulation and equation-based stuff. And then only if that is impossible, you go into agent-based modeling, which is our favorite favorite technique. But there is, yeah, there is no point in running simulations for something that can be just, you know, it's just a pure data analysis. I don't think those are, I don't think those are contradictory methods. It's, it's just we've done a lot of data analysis in the past. We haven't done much of simulation, and we kind of have this goring gap in our models because of that. That's how I see it. But yeah, by no means would I say, oh yeah, don't use GIS anymore, or don't use statistics. That would be insane. Like, by all means, do use them. All right. Any more comments and questions? Yes. Uh, I also have to admit I'm also a little bit in the enemy territories right now, so I'm not a big fan of simulation. Even though I wasn't in your workshop for two days, I learned a lot, so now I know where I stand more, I think. Well, I hope you stand closer to the simulation. <laughs> uh, not, I just, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. I have to read more, obviously, and I have to work more on it. Like, my main problem so far, so I cannot wrap my head around, is the, the phrase that we are using again and again is the causal mechanism. Yep. So, like, if A happens, then the result is the B. A causes B, which is not always the case, again. Like, sometimes it's a physical fact. If it rains this much, I would get this much of an agricultural product is something that you can model. Or if you go to that place, it might happen, sure. But, like, A sometimes, A and B happens at the same time. So, dialectical process is not necessarily A is the cause of the B. Yes. The moment you go into that part, then I would assume the model will be complex, like insanely, that you have to just like, take into account many other things. So if I rob a bank, I will go to jail, it's a fact, it's a cause. But if I'm a politician, if I rob a bank, I might not necessarily go to jail. So like, that is something else that we have to know. And I don't know how much of these variables we can add into our model. And the moment that we start adding more and more, it will become to become more complex, and as you said in the workshop, let's keep the variables low in numbers so we can explain everything. Then it's just like a contradiction like in my mind that where do we stop to make it like, enough complex to be able to grasp and that they didn't go further to make it more uh, explanatory at the end. Mm -hmm. So I think we, we will get into a big fight here because I'm the simple models and well, just the complex models. But yeah, I think you've touched on the on the you know correlation is not causation, and the furthest statistics can ever get you is correlation. Whereas the goal of simulation is to show causation. So as long as you understand your model, you know you you do find this causal relationship. It doesn't mean that those are actually relationship that did exist in the past, but this is a mathematical kind of function that shows if A, then B. And then, you know, and sure, you put so your assumptions into the simulation, but simulation is there to actually test them. So even the super simple ones of like the rains, if it rains more, there will be more, you know, produce on the ground. I mean, the land use simulations, they, they actually test those assumptions. So, so the simulation is the tool to deal with the problem of correlation and not causation. You, you should remember that the, the concept of mechanical explanation is a standard in philosophy of science, because there are much more in causal analysis than traditional Aristotelic causal mechanisms. Today there are two main uh, discussions when you approach the idea of causality in philosophy of science. That's the Judea Ferrell approach of probabilistic causality, and the other is the Wesley Solomon uh, mechanical explanation. There are two sides of the same coin, I think. Um, when you are using the idea of mechanism, this is just a series of operations, and there is some kind of ordering between the different operations. But the result should not be linearly related with the main initial factors. This is the modern view on causality. But we're still using the word of mechanism. But mechanism does not imply linearity. This is one of the best approaches in agent-based modeling compared to other ways of simulation. 
because when you are beginning to create the model, you don't know the rest. But of course, the analytic procedure or your thing, you began with the, the conclusion if you want to create the method to solve it. In archaeology or in history, we began always to the inverse. <coughs> because I know this century, I want to infer how was the past related with this present. And this is the main idea. That's we inverse the reasoning, we create the hypothesis, and then we test the hypothesis. But this mechanism can be as complex as you imagine the different process, the different mechanisms were.